How's it going everybody? Michael from 3D Print Everything here. I am going to do a video today on the MakerBot Replicator Mini. Um, this is not a printer that I was expecting to do a video on today. Not a printer that I have in my fleet. Well, now it's a part of it. Um, but funny story on how I got this. I had a guy call me up. He was at a, he works at a recycling plant. So, you know, boxes and boxes of trash get dropped off and sometimes people throw away good things. You know, a lot of the times a printer like this might be owned by the government and they can't just give it away or sell it to anybody because they have to figure out what's fair on who to sell it to and blah blah blah. So they just throw everything away. So sometimes there might be a perfectly good working printer in the trash. And um, yeah, I was very skeptical on if this was going to be even in working condition. But if you're any bit familiar with this, you'll notice some things immediately. Um, it's missing its top, its front, and its side. It has this glass, but it's supposed to be mostly fully enclosed. It also doesn't have a build plate, so uh, I'll have to get a build plate for it. But it at least has the smart extruder. Um, so, I mean, this right here was, was worth me buying the printer. Um, so this is kind of cool. This is the only thing cool about it that I've found so far. And cool and also not cool in my opinion. So this is MakerBot Smart Extruder if you've never seen it. Um, it's magnetic. They got magnets on the corners here. The uh, gear motor latches in there. And then this is all of your, all of your wires to actually uh, manage this. Um, one other slightly cool thing with their extruder is you can see it kind of push up a little bit there, their in stop, their Z stop is in the head itself. So there is no Z stop, it's the head. So that's kind of cool and you know it goes on fairly easy. You know you just click that on there. So if you had, you know the point being if you had a printer fail and it messed up the extruder or whatever, the extruder jam, you can just swap it out real quick, keep production going and jack with the uh, print head separately. Um, these print heads are over 250 bucks. Um, so yeah, if you wanted a separate two or three to hold spare, you're going to be spending some dang good money on it. Um, this printer retail, when it sold, was $1,400. So $1,400 got you a printer that size that prints smaller than this size. So the King Rune KP3S at $200 brand new has a bigger print bed and a heated print bed where the MakerBot does not. Now to be fair, this MakerBot I think came out like eight years ago if I remember right. I only briefly read a, read a post showing that in 2014 they were beginning shipment of these. So um, I don't believe King Rune had the KP3S out at that time. So it's not really an apples to apples comparison. But um, I mean we can just examine some things. So they, they have what looks to be a thicker belt than what is otherwise on other printers like I'm pretty sure this is your standard size belt and uh, you know that one on this printer for some reason they've oversized it um, so this is a core XY build on a small little frame like this so one of the first times I've seen a core XY build on a teeny teeny frame they have a teeny little linear rail there um, we've got a lead screw with some gears. You can kind of see that gear there, so the gears keep in here. I guess that's its stabilization on the side, is the two gears. Um, the build plate should just kind of slide into this so that you can take the build plate on and out real quick. Um, they do have a camera right here. So this is supposed to kind of view the, uh, the print and let you take photos of it while it's printing. That's kind of cool. It'd be neat if it did a time lapse function or something, which I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Um, looks like this thing had been sitting for a while. Looks like he kind of quickly wiped it, but because this was all the way down, he didn't wipe the uh, the amount of dust that's really been on it. So this thing was was pretty dusty sitting around somewhere. I guess MakerBot was nice enough to add a teeny little light there, and I think, I'm pretty sure there's a teeny little LED right here, too. Um, I mean, Jesus, like, what in the heck is the rest of this? Like, if this is the extruder, and that's all the extruder, you need that much? I mean, here's the extruder. The heck is behind the rest of that? I mean, that, 
I can't imagine their extruder motor is, is that big, so I hadn't tore into one of this yet. I, it looks like there's some type of board in the in the background there. Um, yeah, I mean, the head looks clean. No one's made any really dirty prints off this. But, okay, so the super lame thing about this is literally operating it. So due to this now being old, it is outdated and no longer supported. So this isn't really like a fair video on like when it came out and doing a download of it. But like, you know, I try to sign in, I try to do this. It tells me to go here. I got to download this other thing. I got to register it. I got to do this. I got to retokenize it. Like I I've tried to do everything to make this thing work or to register it and I finally just got told that hey it's this is a legacy printer we no longer support it we don't sell parts for it um, good luck thanks for thanks for having it um, so that's probably a good reason on why it was tossed out is they literally don't support it anymore now I can still print with it from this this says let's see okay so look we got a thing if I take a photo what happens when I take a photo okay so it'll actually save a photo somewhere let's see so that's that's kind of cool, I guess. So there it is. But that's all it does, I guess. I guess you really got to be here to take a photo. There's no function for it to do like a time lapse thing. So cool it has a junky little camera down here, but also pointless. Um, what is it? The store doesn't work because MakerBot desktop is discontinued, so they don't connect this to Thingiverse or anything else. I can upload files from here and this can show me the prepare thing here's the settings so we've got device settings travel speed fan power fan layer we got a couple of extrusion speeds raft speeds outline infill we got a percentage and a layer height and I guess a couple of different uh, cat fill shark fill what the heck is that cat fill uh, model properties rafts who needs that many things for a raft I guess you have to print so many things on a raft you needed a lot of settings for the raft um, uh, leaky connections I haven't ever heard of that one yeah so because this is MakerBot they're gonna have a few different settings in Cura even though MakerBot owns Cura I was totally hoping and expecting me to just have a profile on Cura that I could run this with, but um, they don't. I mean, it's it's that's literally it. So that that's all the custom settings. I mean, that's literally everything we can do to modify it. This would otherwise be what you know most people are going to use. Um, so I can go over here to preview, and it's gonna I guess prepare this real quick. But I mean, really, like, there's no way to run Cura through this thing. This thing does not have a screen. It's got some sort of, like, power button here, but what's the point, I guess? I don't, I don't know. I've clicked it a bunch of times. It didn't do anything. Um, so there's... Oh, I'm curious. What is cat infill? Or shark? That just looks like regular infill. Did I not change it? I don't know. I was, I was hoping it'd be in the shape of a shark. Um, that would be funny. At least they'd have like a, let's see, infill, yeah, cat fill. What's shark fill? Let's see which, if shark fills anything different. Um, yeah, I mean, in my opinion, so I had worked on a large version of one of these. It was one that was literally that size. It was the MakerBot Replicator 2 or something like that, XL. And we just, it needed bearings replaced. The bearings on a MakerBot that were not really any different than okay i guess it is the shape of a shark kind of yeah there it is i see the shark so why though like this is not structurally sound this just to me like it's cute but why would you have shark infill that doesn't make any sense to me like it just like if gosh if there was ever a gimmick it's making a shark pattern your infill to me makerbot i am Amused, two percent, and disappointed, ninety percent. Like that's that's foolish to make stuff like that. Like like why spend time making shark infill when you can do everything else to make the user experience of this thing better? Um, so silly. So what else we got? 
Uh, yeah. Like, due to this thing being old, if, if you're new into 3D printing, 3D printers used to be noisy as heck. I'll go ahead and start this. I mean, if I didn't know any better, I thought this thing was broken. But luckily I've heard some old ones, so I know it's not. Now I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because it doesn't have a bed on it. But that's that's mostly what it sounds like. It's going to be a, a pretty noisy screaming printer when it's actually moving. I'll do an update video when I actually get this thing printing. But, um, yeah, I mean, $1,400. You don't get a build plate. You know, you don't get a spare nozzle. You get one smart extruder and a 160 by 140 by 140 build plate. I mean, that's tiny. Um, I don't know how they expect ABS and PETG to stick without a build plate. Um, at least this is working. I was trying to make it work earlier, and this stuff wouldn't even show up. Um, and it, it, out of nowhere, it was just sitting here, and then it started dumping filament out. And I don't know what... Maybe I hit change or something? I don't know what I hit, but... It was just dumping filament out, and I had no idea why. Um, yeah, so this is the only way to operate it. They have, like, other MakerBot software and other stuff now, but this is apparently the legacy stuff for anybody that old, holds an old printer. I mean, this just reminds me of, like, you know, you own an old iPhone. Sure, it'll work, but they're going to, like, detune your battery through software updates so that you can't, uh, so that you can't use it. Um, or that your battery dies quicker, and that's essentially the same case here. They run Cura, so they don't support it in Cura now. They have their new software, MakerBot Desktop or MakerBot Cloud Print or whatever. It won't work on MakerBot Cloud Print. Um, so if you're like, hey, I see a couple of these MakerBot Minis coming up for sale, and this used to be a $1,500 printer. If I can snag it for $1 to $300, I'm probably getting a great deal. Uh, no. Like, in my opinion, I overpaid for this already, and I paid less than $200 for it. Um, I probably should have given him 50 bucks or just taken it off his hand as a courtesy, but he probably would not have been able to sell it otherwise. I can't imagine anybody else wanting it. I more or less wanted it for the novelty so I could do a video like this and show other people, here's what a $1,400 printer looks like, operates like, and sounds like versus a $200 one that literally in every way but a removable extruder is better in my opinion. You know, if they had set that up on magnets, great. I think MakerBot has a patent on that. I'm not 100% positive, but I'm pretty sure they do, and that's why that's not a standard thing. But that is definitely something that could be standard, and in my opinion, should be. Fast changes of a nozzle, super smart and good, um, but everything else about it is just atrocious. I mean, when I was working on the other one, I just wanted to look at the motherboard. You know, I've seen a lot of printers' motherboards, and they rivet it in place. I mean, literally, the, the, the casing was riveted so that you would never be able to access the motherboard. Like, they do not want you looking at it. It's so, so stinking silly. Like, all the pulleys are going to be different than a regular pulley, and those are going to cost more. Even though you could use a $10 set of pulleys, they want you to use a $120 set of pulleys, and there's absolutely no difference with those. Um... Yeah, I, I'll continue this video when I actually get it printing and we can compare its print quality to something else. But uh, in my opinion, I do not recommend buying an old used MakerBot. I do not recommend buying a new MakerBot. I don't know why anybody would want a MakerBot now other than their gimmicky features that you think you might want. But at the end of the day, your user experience is probably going to be in the toilet compared to just using a more basic printer. I'm all for having nice features. I'm all for making a turnkey printer that you don't have to level and do all that other stuff. And, you know, to me, Anchor Maker looks like it's going to do it right. I think what MakerBot was trying to do was to do like what Anchor Maker is going to do now. And, you know, they just got stuck behind bureaucracy and, and trying to hold on to everything they could. So they overpriced the heck out of a printer and just end up hiring the best sales team they could to go sell it. You know, and a good sales team can sell about anything. And that's what happened here. But this was probably put in some school or some institution like Lockheed or somewhere else. And they figured out it was a nightmare to use. And it just sat. Sat for years probably. Um, I can't imagine. I mean, this does not look like it has much use on it. Um, looks like it has a lot of dust on it. But yeah, I, I doubt I'll put a lot of use through it either. Um, literally, 
just a novelty. Maybe one day I'll hang it up or have fun destroying it or something like that. Maybe I'll take the smart extruder off and just destroy the rest of the printer. Um, might be fun. I don't know. I just can't imagine actually using this thing. I mean, what am I going to use it for? Printing two inch, three inch models? It's literally a four inch build plate. Why? A four inch build plate on like a 13 inch printer. <laughs> like this printer is literally smaller in its entire envelope and prints bigger. Like King Rune beat the replicator mini by a thousand by twelve hundred dollars and has better features and a quicker usability i can get a king rune out of the box leveled and printing before i could even figure out how to print with this even though it was fully ready to go besides the bed i just wanted to see it move i made that guy sit here for 35 minutes as i tried to figure out what software i needed how to do it how to start it there, there's absolutely no controls anywhere on here to move the printer like there's nothing that I can like home it there's nothing that I can move the XY anywhere like I don't why you can't manually control the printer like that's every other printer allows you to manually control it what fourteen hundred dollars and you can't even put a ten dollar screen on it like I don't understand MakerBot you've disappointed the 3d print community in my opinion I have one of the lowest opinions of your company. If you haven't learned about MakerBot, there's a real good video on how they got started and what ended up happening to them. The original MakerBot, on point. After the marketing guy ended up doing a hostile takeover of the company and making his face the whole name of it and everything and turning their printers from, you know, user-friendly, you know, consumer printers into nightmares like this. Um, it's embarrassing. It's it's stupid, and I'm glad that you know China does a better job than you, in my opinion. Um, you know, GST has a reputation alongside MakerBot, and I wouldn't be surprised if they work together, at, just by how crappy both of these companies are in the print community. I'm not trying to just do a rant video here, but yeah, if you're looking for a farm, this is not the machine you want. If you had fifty thousand dollars and you wanted to buy fifty of these, you'd be making a huge mistake. Um, I don't recommend any of the other ones. I mean, for like, like, look, they came out with a good extruder eight years ago, and this is the same exact extruder that they're doing now. You can't tell me you can't improve this at all. And if you could, why release the patents? Like, if you really want to help the community, don't lock down a cool idea like a removable print extruder and make that your only selling point of the printer. It's it's silly. Anyways, guys, it's my first impressions of a MakerBot Mini. I don't like it. I overpaid for it, but I did this for you so that you don't have to overpay for it. Even at $100, that printer's not worth it. Don't. If someone gives it to you, you could entertain it, but I guarantee you it will cost you more time and money than any other printer you could probably buy. Um, they're just not a good printer in my opinion. And it's going to be noisy. Like It's going to be real, real noisy. Anyways, I'm getting the look that I need to finish this up, so I will see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Like share subscribe don't forget to hit the like button if you're still here um my like percentages are like five and ten percent i could totally i would totally appreciate it if if more people can just remember to like it um i never wanted to be somebody that was asking for this but it would be helpful so that this can reach more people and help more people so if you want to help more people like i am like and share it thanks guys have a good day